rather odd to see it floating like this in uh, Ed Odyssey while it's playing uh, the theme from 2001. Yeah. April 13th, 1970. The mood could only be described as relaxed. Apollo 13, man's fifth lunar mission. The third scheduled to land on the moon, continued its tranquil coast. This is the crew of Apollo 13. We should have been there. Uh, nice evening, and uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back to a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like you to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. In addition, uh, have Shaft and Trunnion okay. for a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Okay. Stand by. Okay, uh, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. And as I recall, main B was the one that uh, had a amp spike on it uh, once before. And the interim here, uh, we're starting to uh, go ahead and button up the tunnel again. April 11th, 1970. Launch day. The crew of Apollo 13. Jim Lovell, commander and veteran of three previous missions. He had orbited the moon Christmas 1968 on Apollo 8. Fred Hayes, his first time up, lunar module pilot. Jack Swigert, command module pilot. Three days ago, he was on the backup crew. Now he replaced Ken Mattingly. Mattingly had been dropped from the mission because he had been exposed to German measles. He would watch the launch from Houston's mission control. Auto sequence initiated, flight. Roger. Flight booster. So, S4B pre press complete. Roger. Flight booster. S1C pre press complete. We're on internal power and we go. Roger. How's it look, Econ? You got your space That's good, flight. Okay. MCC record us to flight speed. Ignition flight. Roger. Start, flight. Roger. Touch it, though. All in it. Roger. Okay, Fado has it, look. Looks good here, flight. Good agreement. Okay, boost that, Eli. That's what he looks good, flight. Okay, Capcom, we go. We on the ground. Okay, we go. We want Capcom. Get really the flight. Roger. Booster, how do you look? We look good, flight. We go. Okay, Fado. We're go, flight. Looks good here. Got it. Good, look. flight. Okay, Econ, GNC. Looks good, flight. Looks good, flight. Okay, Sergeant. Looks fine. Through Max Q and we're going, flight. Roger, please. Go for staging, Capcom. Confirm and board out, flight. Roger. Staging, flight. Roger. Flight, fighter trajectory confirmed staging. Roger. Flight booster then board out was way early. Okay. Flight confirmed, uh, number five engine down. Right. Boost, you don't see any problem with that, though, do you? Uh, negative, not right now, flight. All the other engines are go. The next step in the routine of lunar flight was to burn out of Earth orbit toward the moon, then pull free of the third stage and dock with the lunar module Aquarius. At the controls of the command module Odyssey, Jack Swigert. We're hard docked, uh, Houston. We're right here, understand hard dock, good deal. They pull Aquarius away from the Saturn third stage, the S-4B. Okay, I can, uh, I can see the S-4B now at the hatch window. Odyssey and Aquarius moved away from Earth toward the moon. Okay, uh, we've we had a problem here. Five guns. Go, guys. We've had a hardware restart. I don't know what it was. Okay. Oh, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. You see an AC bus undervolt there, guidance? Or, uh, ECOM? Negative flight. Believe the crew reported it. We got a main B undervolt. We may have had an instrumentation problem, flight. Roger. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. Uh, 
the sensation I had uh, that I had felt a vibration accompanying the bang, uh, not a large vibration or a shudder. Is there any uh, kind of leads we can give them? Are we looking at instrumentation? Are we got a real problem or what? We're reading uh, zero N2 pressure in fuel cell one and 13 PSI on uh, fuel cell three O2 pressure. Okay, Barrett, what do you want to do? Open circuit fuel cell one and three? That's for important. Shut down uh, uh, the reactants valve and I uh, ask for a reconfirmation since uh, when you do that it's sort of irreversible. If you shut one of these things down, they uh, uh, only can be restarted from uh, ground support equipment. Yeah, that's what we see. And it looks to me, looking out the uh, hatch, that we are venting something. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Okay, let's everybody think of the kind of things we'd be venting. GNC, you got anything that looks abnormal in your system? Negative light. How about you, Ecom? You see anything that, uh, with the instrumentation you got, that could be venting? That's a firm flight. Let me look at the system flight as far as the venting is concerned. Okay, let's start scanning. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. I assume you've called in your backup ECOMs? Flight, say again. Have you called in your backup ECOMs now, see if we can get some more brain power in this we thing? we got one here. Roger. At the moment, the astronauts are continuing to try to isolate their trouble. A late report says the spacecraft now is operating on battery power alone. All unnecessary equipment is being turned off. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached. The limb spacecraft's good, so if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. Okay, let's make sure that we don't do anything that's going to blow our CSM electrical power with the batteries or that will cause us to lose the main or the uh, fuel cell number two. Okay, we want to keep the O2 and that kind of stuff working. We'd like to have RCS, but we got the command module system. So we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. My concern was increasing all the time. It went from, I wonder what this is going to do to the landing, to I wonder if we can get back home again. Okay, Com, I'm coming back to you. Flight. Go ahead. I think the best thing we can do right now is start a power down. Right about then, it, uh, it was quite apparent to me that it was just a question of time that the command module was going to be dead. You don't want to get fuel cell pumps off, do you? We can do that on fuel cell number one flight. Okay, well, let's make sure we don't blow the whole mission. Well, the thing that concerns me is starting is throwing equipment. We, we had a problem. We don't know the cause of the problem. Flight, I, I've got a feeling we've lost two fuel cells. I hate to put it that way, but... Uh, I, I don't know why we've lost them. It doesn't all tag up. Network from Flight. Flight Network. Bring me up another computer in the RTCC, will you? Uh, we got uh, one machine on the RTCC, and we got dual CPs downstairs. Okay, I want another machine up in the RTCC, and I want a bunch of guys capable of running D-logs down there. Roger that. What all this means is only speculation at this point. First, though there has been some tumbling or rotation of the spacecraft, the astronauts do not appear to be in any immediate danger. I'll tell you what, uh, GNC, can you get somebody in the back room to try to figure out what the equivalent delta V is we're getting so that we can see if we can backtrack to see if we can figure out what's venting. Roger, we'll give it a try, Flight. Okay. When I looked up and saw both uh, oxygen pressures, one absolutely zero and the other one going down, uh, it, it dawned on me, and I'm sure Jack and Fred about the same time, that we were indeed in serious trouble. The only way to survive the situation was to transfer to the limb. Flight Econ. Go ahead, Econ. The pressure in O2 tank one is all the way down to 297. You better think about getting in the limb or using the limb systems. I'd say this is as serious a situation as we have ever had in manned space flight. We've always called the limb a good lifeboat under those circumstances. If at any time in the mission, however, the limb had separated, and we had gotten ourselves into a rendezvous situation or uh, the, the command module being around the moon, then what you state is absolutely true. It would, it would be a fatal situation. Tell me you from flight. Go ahead, flight. I want you to get some guys figuring out minimum power in the limb to sustain life. The accident...